The Super Scooter GT2 is a high-end electric scooter made by Segway with a whopping price tag of $4,000. I have a review unit loaned to me from Segway. My henchman Max has thoroughly tested it. The GT2 packs a whole lot of performance and features, but is it worth $4,000. Let's talk about Max's test results, and then we'll go into the GT2's very impressive specs and components. Segway claims a range of 90 kilometers or 56 miles. Huge numbers, but as with most range estimates provided by manufacturers, this was likely using an economy mode and riding at a conservative speed in near perfect conditions. The range result that Max got while riding not conservatively was 43 kilometers or 27 miles with 3% battery remaining. That's about half of Segway's estimate. So remember that range can vary a lot depending on a wide variety of variables. This applies to all electric vehicles. Max weighed 80 kilograms or 176 pounds at the time of testing, and the weather was a cool 13 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Fahrenheit. His average speed was 49 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour. For the majority of his ride, he was going full throttle in sport mode which drains the battery significantly faster than riding at a more relaxing pace. The top speed reported by the GT2 speedometer was 69 kilometers per hour or 43 miles per hour, which matches what Segway claims. According to Segway, the GT2 goes from zero to 30 miles per hour in 3.9 seconds. We didn't measure that ourselves, but we can say that the acceleration on full throttle felt incredibly strong. The battery in this thing is 1,512 watt hours. That's over twice the capacity of most electric scooters and skateboards. To keep the pack cool when the motors are drawing maximum power, there's a system Segway calls Heat Flux Multi-Layer Cooling System. From what I can tell, they consist of vents on the front and rear of the deck that draw air across some radiators or heat sinks to cool down the battery cells. Like other scooters with similar cooling systems, the majority of the intake is right behind the front wheel. We speculate that it could get clogged up by dirt and grime over time, so you might want to give it a quick brush every now and then. To charge this absolute unit of a battery, a pair of two amp chargers are included in the box. If you plug both in, it takes about 8 hours to charge from zero to full. That gets doubled to 16 hours if you use just one charger. It seems weird to not just ship with one fast charger, but apparently using two chargers simultaneously is a common thing among high-powered scooters. The wheels on the GT2 are absolute chonkers, and with that chonkiness comes ride comfort, traction, and safety. They're 11 by 3.6 inch tubeless pneumatic tires. For reference, most electric scooters come with 8 to 9 inch tires, so 11 inch is quite huge. To minimize the risk of punctures, the tires on the GT2 have a layer of tire liner pre-installed, which seals any small punctures that may occur during a long ride. Features like this aren't immediately appreciable until you encounter a flat, so it's pretty nice that Segway decided to include it. Inside each wheel is a 1500 watt motor, which draws a peak power of 3000 watts each. Segway claims it can accelerate a rider from 0 to 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour in just under 4 seconds. I haven't tried it out for myself, but Max has some experience building his own electric scooters, and he was pretty impressed by the torque. We might shoot a video comparing the performance of this scooter and others down the road, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. The GT2 has a traction control system that adjusts the torque put out by each motor to increase traction on slippery roads. It's pretty rare to see electronic traction control implemented in electric scooters. Seems like Segway has really put a lot of thought into the safety of the GT2. Of course, if you want to do some donuts in the parking lot, just switch to race mode, which turns off traction control. According to Max, he could definitely feel the difference between having traction control on or off, especially in the front wheel when accelerating hard. There's a double wishbone suspension system on the front and a trailing arm suspension in the rear. They both have 15 levels of adjustment for the hydraulic dampers. To tune it, there's a little red knob that you turn. Adjustable damping isn't just useful for off-roading. Having it dialed in for your weight and riding style can improve the comfort and safety on regular old roads too. The GT2 has dual piston hydraulic brakes with 140 mm discs with regen braking in the back wheel which should further improve braking power with the added bonus of recharging the battery a little at the same time. From what I can tell, they're also compatible with standard mountain bike brakes. So if you want to replace or upgrade any part of the brake system, it should be plug and play. 
twisting the shift knob changes riding modes, which include walk, park, eco, sport, and race. There's also a boost mode for you speed junkies that's activated by pressing down on the same knob. The torque is already incredible even without using boost. Speaking for myself, even eco mode felt really powerful. According to Max, the handlebar is well designed, and all buttons were within reach of his thumbs. His only minor critique on the handlebar is that there's no room to mount anything, such as a camera. The PM OLED display on the GT2 is transparent and easy to read, even under bright sunlight. It looks pretty awesome and kind of resembles a fighter jet's heads-up display. The layout is similar to what you'd find on a car dashboard, with your speed, riding mode, battery percentage, etc. This thing has a ton of lights. There's a main headlight, a daytime running light, turn signal lights on the front and back, a brake light, and even party lights. The headlight has a max brightness of 900 lumens. That's plenty for nighttime use. For reference, high beam lights in cars start at around 1200 lumens. The standing area of the deck measures 69 by 24.5 centimeters. That's 27 by 9.5 inches. The surface is made of textured rubber, which is decently grippy and comfortable. It's just wide enough to ride with your feet side by side. For a more skate-like stance, it's plenty comfortable, with a pocket on the front to snuggle your toes into, and a wedge on the back to brace against when accelerating hard. The long wheelbase of 114.5 centimeters or 45 inches and the relatively low ride height of 22 centimeters or 8.7 inches provide much needed stability when riding at high speeds. The only real issue we had with the GT2 is its portability. This thing is heavy. At 53 kilograms or 117 pounds, the portability of the GT2 is closer to the kind of scooter that you sit on rather than a traditional kick scooter. While it does fit inside the back of an SUV, it was not easy putting it in and taking it out because of how heavy it was. It's definitely not something you'll want to do every day. Even moving it up or down a couple steps was difficult. So this is something to consider if you have to deal with stairs. If you need a scooter that you can pick up, the GT2 is not for you you'll definitely want to use a ramp or elevator. There's a couple other cool features like Sentinel Mode, Walk Assist, Cruise Control, and NFC Unlocked. Sentinel Mode is something like an anti-theft mode for when you've got to hop into the convenience store for a moment or quickly rob a bank. The scooter basically locks itself, sounding a loud alarm, and freezes the motors if someone tries to move it without first unlocking it. And trust me, no one's going to pick it up and run away with it. This is a feature I think all electric scooters should adopt, maybe even electric skateboards. The design style of the GT2 is a huge distinguishing feature from other high-performance electric scooters. The cockpit layout, the suspension design, the cooling vents, and even the splash guards all feel extremely well thought out and polished, with a coherent theme throughout. This is one of the few PEVs that look great from a distance, and even better up close. In fact, the design kind of has a mecha style going, which I obviously think is awesome. The frame is made of aircraft grade aluminum, which Segway says can handle a max rider weight of 150 kilograms or 330 pounds. The duration of the warranty on the GT2 is different for each component. Some parts, like the hub motors, are covered for two years. The battery is covered for one year. And even the consumable parts, like tires and brake pads, have warranty for 30 days. Segway has authorized dealers and service centers across the globe, more than 30 of them in just North America. You can find them on Segway's website. Segway also sells replacement parts for those of you who want to service the scooter on your own. Many e-scooters in the high-performance category can look and feel a little rough around the edges with a function over form design philosophy. There is definitely a market for that, for the enthusiasts looking for the most performance per dollar. And those products really do push the limits of electric scooter performance. But the GT2 seems to be trying to attract a different kind of audience. Compared to other high-performance scooters around $4,000, it doesn't have the largest battery or the highest top speed. But most of us don't need those kinds of specs anyway. What the GT2 has to offer is a more holistic and well-rounded experience with all its unique quality of life and safety features. Without skimping on performance, that most riders can reasonably appreciate. All of that packaged in an aesthetically pleasing design with exceptional fit and finish. The Super Scooter GT2 is a fast and powerful street cruiser, a daily driver that's more than powerful enough for weekend thrill rides. And for some, probably the best looking scooter at this price point. So if you're looking to throw $4,000 at an electric scooter, the GT2 is absolutely worth considering.